Okay, yeah. start over. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Go. One, two, three. Okay. Action. <laughs> All right, hey, good morning, guys. So uh, we wanted to give you a little bit of heads up. If you're planning on taking your boat anywhere around uh, Florida, Texas, etc., and tour around the Western Gulf of Mexico. So we've just done this, we've completed it. And yeah, it was, <laughs> it was roughly about four months uh, to get it all done, maybe five, eh? Closer to five? Yeah, about five months yeah, total. Four, yeah, five, four and a half. Um, so here, we're gonna give you the do's, don'ts, that we think um, that are our experience, and that's as far as we can go with, right? So, so basically, a lot of people have reached out yeah. um, and messaged us and saying, "Hey, this is something we'd love to do. Yes, uh, it's so interesting. We love your channel. We love, you know, the information and the videos that you sent out. But in more details, we wanted to just sit down and do a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Uh, Don's going to talk about his experience uh, doing the Western Gulf of Mexico, um, and uh, hopefully, we'll be able to answer some questions." But if you guys do have more questions, don't hesitate to ask. We're here for this. Yeah, feel free. Hit us up. We purchased the boat in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, we removed the boat out of the water, put it on the herd for roughly about a month. Got the bottom paint done, checked the through hulls, repacked some bearings, um, etc. Um, yeah, we washed it, got her all ready. Washed, we did waxed. all the motor work, like just kind of checked everything. Yes. Uh, um, made sure that it worked. Of, yeah, replaced a lot of belts, hoses, and basically got everything ready to we felt safe, comfortable, provisioned up as best as we could. Lots of provisions. And then uh, we got the boat back in the water, and then we started um, planning uh, a, a little, in a little more depth. So we left Little Rock, Arkansas. We traveled down the Arkansas River. We went through the lock systems there. Basically the same, kind of, sort of. We got to experience barges. Barges, tons <laughs> of barges, yes. Lots of barges. Barges and tugs. Yeah. And, and here we are, float, like we were so tiny beside these barges. Yeah. They were just... Mass. busy and it's 24 7 they don't stop. I, at all hours of the night the barge is gonna you know go by yeah. you and uh they it are, was an interesting experience they I are love that. yeah and it's basically uh consider think about this it is the highway for boats and it is constantly on the vhf constantly on the radios constantly scanning and i was extreme because this was my first time um on bigger waters so I was extremely thankful that we didn't hit the ocean right away. Like we, we actually got a chance to go down the Arkansas River and then from there yeah. the Mississippi. But yes. yeah, you can take that over. Yeah. So, so Mississippi. So from the Arkansas, we went through down the lock system. As I believe we start, started at lock seven and we ended up at lock zero, which is the last lock, which brings you basically right onto the Mississippi. But these are massive locks, yeah. obviously for the barges to yeah. go through and, and yeah. they're quite high as well. Yeah. The, the system's a little bit more different than what we were used to so but again like I just love the whole experience of yeah. going down the Arkansas River it was the, great and never experienced anything any locks in the United States uh, basically things differ a little bit, a little um, bit yeah. but the lock masters and everything were there were fantastic they're all helpful they yes. get on the radio with you uh, we explained to them hey we're newbies not with lock system and the barge the like captains of barges were really nice as well like when we were talking on the, yep. on the radio yep. um, extra Extremely respectful, and super, a, super nice. And a couple of them even took pictures and sent them to us. That's right. When we were anchored out in a couple of locations. Yeah, so, so when that, we were anchored yeah. out, they would take pictures of yeah. us like anchored out at sunset and they would they would send us yeah. send it to friends of ours who ended up sending uh, it to yeah. us and so, say, Hey, this so is you guys. Fun. So yeah. now it wasn't straightforward as it sounds due to the fact that they had a lot of lock closures going on, so basically they had from 7 p.m. till for 7 a.m. Yeah, for maintenance. Yeah. And they were open from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. Now, not knowing the waterway systems at all. Um, it so meant couple, they would have yeah. been cruising it at night. Yeah, and let's get one thing straight. The barges are not well lit. Um, 
Yeah. So traveling around the Mississippi <laughs> or the Arkansas at night, unless you have a really good nav system with full AIS on your boat, not really, even with the radar, it's a basic radar that we have, it's not overly recommended. But and I, when we were cruising, uh, they had a, um, the waters were really low. So again, being able to cruise at night, even oh. with a nav system, would have been scary. Yeah. It would have been iffy. So the Arkansas River at the time when we left, which was September, correct? Right. So that, that water level was fine. Now, once you got to the Mississippi, the Mi Mississippi was actually at a record all-time low. And it was, I think it was anywhere from 22 to 25 feet low. So yeah. it was... It, Sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a great start, but anyway. So, so some areas were super, like we had our, our cruising uh, nav, uh, we, like because the waters were so low, it was narrow, and then so there was little us, and we had all these big barges going right beside us because there wasn't enough room for us to be able to give us enough space. And the barges so and, it was, and the tubs. That was a little bit... But yeah, that was exciting. <laughs> that was, yeah. So from, um, basically from Little Rock, we went down the Arkansas River, Lock Zero, got onto the Mississippi. From Mississippi right there, we stopped in Greenville. That was our first stop. And basically the only stop all the way down to get fuel right up until you go from there to Baton Rouge. So there's one spot, you call ahead, Greenville Yacht Club, Yep. Marina and this stuff. We you have to call two weeks in advance, roughly, Ultimately. to make sure they'll they'll bring your fuel in for you, right? Uh, and um, they'll do it for you. But be, keep that in mind. That's your only spot to stop. Okay, from uh, Arkansas, Little Rock to uh, Greenville, and then that is the only stop from there to right till Baton Rouge to get fuel. So, and it's also if you guys do end up uh, doing this uh, trip. Mm -hmm. and going to Greenville, it's recommended to not leave the site. Uh, just stay within the marina. Everything is fenced in and everything is super safe at the marina. Yeah. But if you guys want to do groceries and so forth, I would probably Daytime. reach out to the staff mm -hmm. um, and just ask them sort of the best way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we were, were told kind, that. We, we just kind of gotten a heads up when we, we were, were told there, that. So. I didn't find it that sketchy. Did not feel did. unsafe. It didn't feel unsafe at all, even when we went into town. But apparently, in the evening, we were advised not to go into town anytime after four o'clock. And there's a casino right, right beside yeah, the, yeah, the marina, which fantastic. we didn't go to, no, but yeah. No. Um, okay, so we fueled up there. Now <laughs> we're ready to leave. And uh, next thing you know, a uh, barge had gone sideways. Coast Guards all over uh, the channel, uh, all over the VHF. The Mississippi's no shit. Um, so um, we waited. We were constantly, and the Coast Guard was fantastic. They were uh, on the phone with us constantly, going back and forth. That was a week and a half, two weeks. We waited over a week. It's in one of our videos. Sure, yeah. yeah. You'll and you'll have to go through some of the videos if you want a little more info, right? This is the basic layout of how it went. Uh, but it was a week, week and a half, possibly a week on there hold. on hold. And then when they finally one <laughs> one gentleman said, "Okay, you're good to go." And then when we get down there, um, and the Mississippi, even though it's 20 feet low, the current is flying. Basically, um, yep. with the boat in neutral, um, I'm doing. Uh, Five, five and a half knots, not in gear. So it, it's cruising. Um, we save money on fuel that way. Yeah, yeah, we did great <laughs> on fuel on the way down, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to drop anchor a little bit off a channel marker because it's so low. Um, and we had to wait overnight. Then they finally let us through. So it wasn't the end of the world, but it was a, a rough evening, worried about dragging, obviously, barges. And the barges were no more than 10 feet beside us. And so we took turns. We, we took did turns. night shift. Yeah, we took we turns to yeah. stand watch, uh, make sure that the barges see us, yeah. a little less floating. Yeah. And uh, but it worked out. It was it worked okay. Fine. Yeah. yeah. The next yes, day we were we were we got the green light to to keep going. Yes. So we were happy about that. Yes. Um, and then we went from down there. We uh, we went down to just shy of Baton Rouge, and then we turned on to the Port Allen uh, waterway system. Canal. Canal. So we turned down there, we went through another lock and went down there. We found a place to park for the evening at a local restaurant, bar establishment. That was a cute place. It was a great place, yeah. We got on the Port Island lockway, uh, the waterway system lock canal, and went through the one lock. It's very, very narrow all throughout there. Um, it was nice. Um, I loved it. 
It was, I think it was, that was my favorite part. No, the bayou was the favorite part. But that's down to Port Allen, isn't it? The canal? Past, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit after yeah. that, but it's still the same system. Same system, yeah. Uh, I loved it. It was like, it's the bayou. It's yeah. very, uh, I mean, sketchy for you because there's a few things well, floating and stuff. You got to keep yeah. attention to the waters. Yeah. But the, and the whole water. scenery was really neat. Yeah. Well, so, anyway, uh, we got down to Port on Lock and we're heading down to Morgan City. Uh, now, the, uh, again, like she was saying, the, the funnest part, I think, this whole trip might have been actually going through Louisiana in that bayou. Yeah. Uh, the airboats and, and the hunters and uh, the gators in front of the boat and, yeah. and, and uh, the boats. There's tons of boats all along the shore that are sunken. Um, and so it's a little eerie feeling because there's nothing else around. Um, so really neat. And then you had the houses, the floating houses and cottages yeah. and, and hunting shacks. And, and it, it was, that was, that was we really We had like neat. trees in the middle of yeah. the river. It, it would be a it was really still, cool, like, nee, 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 Oh, it's movie. a horror movie stuff, right? It's but, right out of there. But still beautiful yes. at the same time. It was just, uh, but again, yeah, due and the to crocodiles the water. were neat. Cause we, yeah. I was, we were like, where's the next croc? Which one? Where yeah. is it? And then um, we'd be like, look, there's one over there. Yeah. And they'd be swimming in front of the boat. Um, yeah. It's pretty neat stuff. I uh, really enjoyed that. No, yeah, you're guns, going. Yeah. Well, put it this way: you're in so remote areas, and there's channels here, channels left, channels right, and I was starting to second guess myself because it starts narrowing down. There's trees down all over the place, and and you're you're surrounded with crocodiles, sunken boats off to the left, off to the right that have been there for 10, 15, 20 years maybe. So, so second just guessing to say, myself. Yeah, yeah, and just to say, so now we're. Um, were in the bayou in Louisiana and since we left in September all the way to where we're at now in Louisiana we still hadn't come across another trawler we were the only trawler <laughs> that was doing this actually the only trip. pleasure craft pleasure craft yeah period there like was nothing not, no there was nothing. barges, barges yep. and shipping containers yes. And in the bayou, it was all like little, you know, fishing yeah. boats and people going hunting and so forth. Yeah. So we were still kind of yeah. going like, what is yeah. going on? Um, so from the bayou, we ended up in Morgan City, uh, where we waited for our friend Mike to come down. So we waited for Mike, uh, stayed in Morgan City. That place was fantastic. Uh, we got treated. A gentleman jumped off the bridge. Not jumped off. He came down to see us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was there, and he goes, I seen your boat here with a flag for three days. Fantastic. Guy. Long story short, uh, he st I invited him on the boat. We sat there and trotted for about 45 minutes. And then the last thing he said to me, he goes, did you ever have a Cajun boil yet while you're here? I said, no, I haven't. And he goes, and he even invited us to his house. And I said, well, I don't want to intrude. Thank you. And uh, next thing you know, an hour later, I hear this voice. There's your boil. And he had gone and got us crayfish and, and corn and a real Cajun Coral boil beads. and walked away and from me. He goes, you told you you weren't leaving Louisiana without a boil. And he walked away. And I, I couldn't even pay. And he goes, nope, that's the way it is. So the people there. Do you remember his name? I don't. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, so anyway, just like who does this, things. right? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It's like, and that really made our day. Like that was just fantastic. So welcoming. Oh, and, and all the people in Louisiana were just fantastic. Uh, Morgan City Hardware Store. Little shout out to them. They had a huge um, party, <laughs> which we couldn't go to. We we're waiting for it, but they just started dredging off the dock, and then they kicked us out to the other side of the river. So we're on the other side of the bridge. Um, <laughs> but Don and I were so looking forward to, <laughs> to Just, going yeah. to get some social life. Yeah. We've been on the boat. We've been cruising. We're kind of tired. Yeah. Um, excited, but tired at the yeah. same time. And we were really looking forward to well, like music and some food. Yeah, and some they closed people. down the street and had a band. Yeah, and, yeah. it would have been so much fun. And it was an no. hour before they said. An hour before the party, we got a call on the radio saying, you know, they have to dredge and we need to move to the yeah. other side we're like no and don was trying to negotiate can it wait can yeah. it wait a few hours or can it wait till the morning and they were like uh we'd and, love to but no <laughs> and even even the guy in the dredge 
he was fantastic. I told him what was going on, and he, he was just fantastic. Actually, one of the crew members came over on one of the small boats, and he was talking to him. Chris. He goes, Chris, was it? Yeah. And he's actually building his own boat, and a uh, fantastic guy. Hey, Chris. Shout hey, out Chris. to you. Thank you for following us. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Anyway, he's like, oh, I wish I could just bring you over. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, long story short, it was a lot of fun. Morgan City, great people. Louisiana, fantastic time. At least in Morgan City, we never had a problem, and everybody was fantastic. Uh, great and place. And we to were rent. able to walk to get you a groceries. Yeah, it wasn't walk, that far groceries. at all. There was Fuel. lots of stores. Yeah. Fuel, yeah. Fuel's right before Fuel there. Fuel was there, yeah. so. And you're right at the bridge. Uh, and it's yeah. not noisy at night. I didn't find it. So um, if anyone wants more information on Morgan City, ask us the questions. We'll be happy yes, to answer absolutely. them and go into more details. But yeah, yeah. great experience there too. Uh, so we were there probably for, uh, I think we waited for Mike for probably roughly a week. Um, maybe a little less than that, yeah. which was fine. Um, and then we took off from there, me, Mike, and Charlie. And we ended up going down, I think, one of our first stops. I might miss a stop or two in here, but we just wanted to give you our experience on the way down. I think we stopped at uh, Shell Morgan Landing. Uh, that was on the ICW heading to Texas. Uh, we stopped there overnight, got some more fuel again, and then we carried on from there right to Galveston. Now, on the Navion... Shell Navi Morgan was really cool because that's when we first started seeing dolphins as we were getting closer, correct? Well, we pulled into Galveston, I believe that was your first... Uh, yeah, yeah, that was your first well, dolphin experience. Galveston, is that, is that when I jumped off? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so it was before that. Yeah. What was the marina called there? It was nice there. The other marina, so that one I don't remember what it was called, unfortunately. Yeah, that yeah. was nice. So between this uh, Shell Morgan and Galveston, there's one marina in the midst that we like, can't find. We it. can find out where that is if, yeah, if ever you guys want beautiful. to. Beautiful, that. that marina was actually gorgeous. Yeah. It was beautiful marina. We we're getting close then. Yeah. We were like, yay, we're finally. To the Gulf, yes. We're finally in the Gulf, yeah. or almost. Yeah, so we stopped uh, Shell Morgan and that other marina. We ended up, uh, well, we left. Uh, that other marina heading to Galveston that was our first experience going into the Gulf but for, we did that on purpose because people are gonna be like well why didn't you go through the inlay I there? did that for a purpose yes because it's a it was a mm. 50 mile uh, run onto the Gulf and I because we had just bought the boat we were coming down the Mississippi I couldn't get a, f a good fuel burn rate so I needed to know what because we're going downstream on the Mississippi doing five and a half knots in neutral and so we're burning no fuel so i i'm trying to i want to get five hours out in the gulf coming into galveston to get a rough idea on what this thing is actually going to burn for fuel so when we left there heading towards galveston um it's a uh, they they <laughs> at this time of year navi or sorry your weather apps no matter which one you're looking at i'm not going to pinpoint any one they're all going to tell you Uh, one, one third less yeah. than what you can anticipate having as the worst case scenario ish yeah so the, <laughs> when they're saying one meter waves double it okay now everybody's like, probably going to be saying well no it doesn't work like that well let me tell you something yeah most people will agree I okay think. i've seen it on okay. many channels many videos I was, they're all saying the same thing i like, was on that gulf on the whole western gulf okay now we're september october november december Bad time okay. of year to travel to, though. Yeah, so, but just to let you know, when they're calling for 1 or 1.2s, minimum, you double it. And that's just the way it is. Okay. Now, uh, we have a 44-foot trawler best way. Uh, it's a slow trawler. So, um, I'm more than comfortable she on the boat. She can go fast. No, she can't. She just doesn't like it. You don't like her to go fast. She doesn't like to go fast. <laughs> So anyway, uh, the most she'll do is about 13 miles an hour <laughs> on a good day. Uh, <laughs> but when we start getting closer to Galveston, that's when um, the waves start picking up a little more. And um, there was a lot of boat traffic. There's a lot of container ships coming in and out. You had to time it uh, to when the one was coming out. And let me tell you something. When you can only do 13 miles an hour, those container ships go a lot faster than that. So when you're trying to come into a cut or an inlay, an inlet sorry and they're coming up behind you so i'm waiting for one to come out and i zoom right in um these mm -hmm. things fly right behind you and the waves are rough and we came in when the tide was on its way out so it was not ideal and the, the boat was rocking and charlie just she was 
not happy no. at this point. Um, she Basically, wasn't seasick, I, but she was just scared. scared. Uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. And yeah, at one point I told Don, I said, call the Coast Guards. I want off this boat now and get the yes, helicopter to, yeah. to harness me off. But we're right beside <laughs> land. so anyway. Now, this was my first time yes. in like seas, Gulf of Mexico. I've never done it before. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of, and of course the weather, the weather lied. <laughs> so well, the weather I was in a bit of a shock. Yeah. And um, Like it was still a nice sunny day and uh, it's just, it just the way the inlet is, right? I got to see dolphins. She's so that makes my day. <laughs> At least I was able to focus on something well, else. Well, I'll tell you another rocking. thing, though. By the time we hit the dock, she already had a plane ticket. So she pretty had a plane much. ticket pretty much booked by the time we pulled into the marina. Pretty much. As well as a extra large pizza for me here in my... She had... Uh, plane uh, ticket to... To Cosmo. get off the boat, yeah, and you're gone. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't. I, I wasn't done with the boat at all. I just, uh, I think it just was too much, and I needed to let Dawn continue the, you know, the journey, and meet up, and then be able to get used to the boat once we're, you know, in familiar waters. <laughs> and thinking back, at a better time of year too, because the waters are calmer in the summertime. Yeah, and, and thinking back of all the stuff I went through, I, I actually am quite thankful that she didn't come. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't particularly. I would have cried. Yeah, <laughs> it, it would have been, been. So if she didn't like that part, she really wouldn't have liked the rest. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, Charlie jumps off the ship. Me and Mike are still on board. Uh, we stop at a few other uh, destinations. We ended up at South Padre Island eventually. Uh, South Padre Island is where um, basically Mike got off the boat. Um, he went back to Cozumel and it was great having Mike on the boat. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, great help. Uh, just a fantastic friend. And then a friend of Mike from high school, Rodney Edwards, he says, I want to come down to Mexico. I said, well, why don't you do this? I said, why don't you jump on the boat and we'll do the Gulf? And he said, I'll be there in a week. So I said, okay. So uh, me and Rod uh, met up in South Padre Island, Texas, and uh, gave the boat a wash down. We provisioned the boat, fueled the boat. So uh, got all that stuff done, loaded the boat full of food, every square inch of pantry space, freezer space, everything, and off to Tampico. So I had customs jump on the boat from So Texas. Tampico is where, um, where the U.S. and the border basically between the U.S. and Mexico. So basically you're leaving the country so you got to check out. So uh, you, we called uh, South Padre Island, they come right down to your boat. Um, when the two customs officers uh, showed up, they're like, where are you going? I'm like, I, I told them what I was planning on doing. And, and they start chuckling, and I told them about the videos that were produced, or starting to put out. And um, then they start giggling, and I'm like, I said, uh, where's the good spot to stop in Tampico? And, and they just stared at me, and they said, there is no good spots to stop. <laughs> and did you hear about all the people and all the stuff that's happening to, to boaters and stuff? I'm like, hmm, well, no, but okay, we're still going. <laughs> Long story. I'm going to make this as, as quick as I possibly can for you. We're the only boat to do this in 35 years. So he says, this Checking is the port captain. He also told me I was crazy and it wasn't advisable for me to do this. He said, bad stuff will happen to you. I said, okay. I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. Um, I, we showed up there, I believe it was on a Saturday at 2 p.m. Customs was supposed to be open until 4. It's Mexico. Expect expect you're going to be delayed it's in one of our videos it's in the video yeah, yeah it so explains all the a details little, are in yeah. there if you guys want to see yeah. and if you have questions on the checking in yeah. uh, in tampico yes um do reach out to us or to don uh, he'll be able to help you guys out Absolutely. as to how it works and what to expect now on another note um the um uh, the only reason why because they would have and that was told that they would have shuffled me down and told me just to go to Veracruz, they said. But on the Texas uh, stamp that I had, they had marked down that, because I told them where I was checking in. I said Tampico, and it said it on the on the documentation. So then they were like, just go to Veracruz. I'm like, well, it says Tampico. And they're like, uh, so anyway, they didn't know what to do. So we went back and forth. So between immigration, Port Authority captain, and uh, health and safety, and the health the and health safety health, guy. Yeah. We got it figured out. It took, uh, by the time I got out of there, I think it was Tuesday. It was a holiday Two Monday. Days. Yeah, and, and Monday was a holiday for them. Uh, they didn't know what to do. 
Yeah. Because they've never done it. And this is my and first time. And we didn't know what to do because we didn't know. Like, now, luckily, Charlene is very organized and has everything. Uh, here's the paperwork. Everything is done. The I's are all dotted and T's are crossed. So thank so you. So I'm basically working the background. So because I flew into Cozumel waiting for Don. And uh, I um, basically was working in the background, kind of Absolutely. You know, dealing yes. with all the other stuff that needs to be done. And, just, and there uh, is a lot. There was a lot for her to do because I was on the phone pretty steady. And so anyway, we got checked out at Tampico. On a different note, if you were going to be leaving and you have the fuel consumption to do so, just go to Veracruz. It's going to save you a lot. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with Tampico. We weren't allowed to get off the boat, though. All right, now, uh, so we're, now we're leaving Tampico, and we're on our way to uh, Tampa Machoco. So we're heading towards Tampa Machoco, and uh, about 1 or 2 in the morning, the winds pick up crazy. The boat's slamming up and down. Uh, I ended up pulling behind one of the islands, Island uh, Isla Lobos, uh, which is actually a beautiful island, reefs and everything, and, and sandbars. Very tricky to get in there. So I got in, I tucked in behind the wind and the waves for the evening. Um, anchored out. Anchored out, and then um, the, uh, we noticed in the, the weather um, was only gonna get worse. Uh, for the next five days and it was just going to get worse and worse and the wind direction was going to change so we'd have to be constantly going around uh the islands um, to try to pick a spot long story short i pulled out i pulled out behind the the reef and i'm like okay this isn't too bad then i look straight ahead of me and we got well i was looking eye to eye on the flybridge with the waves so we're, yeah, yeah we're talking 20 foot rollers <clears throat> I didn't feel like the boat was in any danger. I was actually quite enjoying it. It was a beautiful sunny day, uh, but it was windy. <laughs> um, Rod was actually on the front of the boat, just pulled the Titanic thing, and it was it was awesome. But it was we'll throttle up with one to try to steer the boat up into the waves. I had myself braced, uh, full throttle to try to steer it up, get back down, because I had to turn. Um, I, I had to go to a direction that wasn't safe to travel at. So after the, about the five or six hours of this, when I got the boat docked and tap in Tampa Machoco and fueled the boat up, they let us stay at the dock overnight. Um, right after that, I passed out. I was exhausted from holding onto that steering wheel and going up over the swells. So um, no, but you made it. We made it. It wasn't. I didn't think it was dangerous. I, if anything, it was. Uh, this boat is just just amazing um, it'll take twice as much ten times as much as a person will um, get that in your mind right just when you think things are going bad to have faith in your boat depending on what you're in and obviously yourself. Yeah. and don't yourself don't panic don't panic <laughs> don't do <Yes>. like me <laughs> um, so we stayed in Tampa Machoco met some wicked locals wandered around the town and it was a lot of fun um, honestly um, all the people everything tons of restaurants Tampa Machoco doesn't sound like much uh, a huge fishing village and it's a lot of fun uh, the people there are just wonderful like seriously wonderful uh, offering to drive us everywhere everything um, we stayed there for about three days waiting for a good weather window and we we're heading on our way to Veracruz uh, uneventful night it was nice no actually it was eventful there was a sport fishing boat with his autopilot on not a light on he was fishing but also passed out now at three o'clock in the morning in the gulf and i almost get t-boned um, i got nothing to say on that um i see him coming i'm on the horn i had to go reverse on one and go around the back side of him and then he's just doing zigzag motions right and then that's when i realized he's passed out there's nothing going on he's just got his white point set and he, he's passed out i'm assuming that's what's going on anyway make it to veracruz veracruz uh, yes, you can get fuel. Uh, you might have to wait a day or two or call in ahead. The marina is very, very nice. Um, there is quite a few uh, uh, private boats. Um, the port is very busy coming in and out. Uh, so be prepared. You do have, you should talk to the port authority when you're pulling in and out of that one. Um, aside from that, the marina was great. The town is right there. You can get all your shopping done. There is a McDonald's. Hit it. I did. And uh, you, you gotta do it. You gotta do it when you're there. Um, yeah, so uh, Veracruz, it's it's a nice place. We were more in Veracruz downtown locals, and it was great. It's the best part. 
yeah. It, Anything it, local in yeah, Mexico is the, the best. The part. food is great. Yeah. Uh, the beaches are very. We'll we'll send up a little video of that or a picture anyway. The beaches are they're packed full of uh, chairs and umbrellas, and there's only about 20 feet of beach, and then there's restaurants. Anyway, we'll, we'll send up a picture or check out the the, the, the video on yeah. Veracruz. We'll put a link to the yeah. video. Yeah, we stayed there maybe a night or two. Got a great weather window and off to Quotza. <laughs> Coatsacolas. Coatsacolas. Now, Coatsacolas. Um, Nicest way I can put this is it avoided like the plague. Don't okay? go there. Don't go to Coatsacolas. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, quickly. Quickly. If it wasn't for connections, I would be still maybe stuck there. They wouldn't let me in, they wouldn't let me out, um, and they wouldn't give me fuel unless I. Just, just listen to me when I say this. Go get your fuel in Veracruz and do not and bypass Quetzalcoatlus. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Thank you, Arcadio. If you're watching this video, you're the man. Huge, huge. Seriously, Arcadio, yeah. you were. And he brought us to his house. This man was just fantastic. Uh, fed us every day. It was amazing. Very happily left. <laughs> Very happy. Make a run for it, leave. Well, I'll put it this way: <laughs> when we, when Charlie finally made enough phone calls to Ugh. get me, allow me to leave the port. I mean, at that point, um, the way they have uh, breakwater pulling into Quetzalcoatlus, uh, the breakwater there is well over twenty-five feet. When I'm ready to pull out, they stop me again. And I'm floating up there, but I'm causing a bit of a, 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 a disturbance, yes, in the canal because I'm trying to do this on purpose. I want to leave. Okay, so let's let's make their life a little bit difficult, right? Um, finally, after a couple boats coming in and out, I'm not really moving out of my position. I, I'm determined I'm leaving. And then all of a sudden, when I'm looking ahead at the breakwater, I can see the waves splashing over top of the breakwater. I'm like, great. So I looked at Rodney again. I said, everything off the front of the bow and batten it down. Batten everything down. I said, it ain't going to be good. So leaving court, they finally said, okay, go. If you're going to go, go now. I'm looking at the waves of the breakwater. Rodney's like, we got this. I'm like, <laughs> we ain't staying, so we're leaving. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so we left there, snuffed the bow again, probably five or six times on the way out of there. Okay, so and then we... Uh, we took off and we are, uh, were made it to uh, Progresso. And we want to give a special shout out to Sue Jacquet from the Eucalpatan Marina in Progresso. I reached out to him late in an afternoon because Chardonnay mm -hmm. was on her way. Um, the uh, Jacquet, who was the person I was dealing with, he was heading off for the weekend yeah. and he ended up working overtime to make sure that Chardonnay was well secured yeah. at the docks and he was flagging the boat in to make sure that Don knew exactly which uh, slip to get into. Yeah. Super nice and you can take it over from there yeah. to the marina. So uh, also when you're pulling into Progresso it's like, <laughs> I don't know if it's the biggest pier in the world but it certainly is large, like it's a, it's huge. a huge, huge. Uh, check out the video if you want to see that. Uh, pulled in the, uh, to Progresso. You pull down the side of the pier and it's basically the first marina there. Uh, there's a Pemex uh, just past it, maybe by 100 feet or 200 feet. Pulled in there. The marina was super clean, super accommodating. Everybody was really, really nice there, um, especially the staff. We had uh, a truck come in full of bottled water, filled up the boat again and uh, stayed there for about a day or two. Um, after that, we that was it. We, we took off from Progresso. I think it was early in the morning, yeah. That was another, we were heading right to Isla. We decided to either go to Cancun or Isla. Harris. Isla Maharis. But you weren't sure, you were, well, you it, were gonna start the journey. Yeah, so. Because it was a long trip. Yeah, it was. It was 26 hours It was or 26 or 28 hours. Yeah. And that one there, I wasn't sure if I was gonna pull into Cancun. I was told and advised a couple of different spots and it's not if the weather's bad and stuff like that so i was playing that one by ear whenever we sort of rounded the corner around cancun it was rough ish mm -hmm. it wasn't horrible by any means it was picking up then but, i remember but that i remember the, the sun was sun was and the the you're almost at the end right and so you're so excited you're at cancun you can start seeing buildings because you usually don't see anything <laughs> and uh, and uh, oh yeah, and for the last little while, I was fifty or sixty, eighty miles off of shore, 
and it was still only 25, 30 feet deep, just on a separate note. Um, came around the corner, and then all of a sudden, then I can see Islam Harris. And we start pulling in there, and my sign was, we must have passed, I think the turtles were mating, and there was turtles, those big, huge, monstrous sea turtles. <laughs> everywhere. And they were, we're just driving right beside them, and I was going, I slowed down so much because I thought I was gonna, like I was making sure to avoid them at all costs, obviously. But they wouldn't move away from the boat. Anyway, it was fantastic. Uh, I was like, my God, this is this is this is unbelievable. Pulled and it. that was you were pulling into East Lama Harris mm -hmm. on January first, New Year's. It was on New Year's Day. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah. four months. That was four. Actually, it was four months and three days of traveling by that time. And yeah. Isla Harris is situated right beside Cozumel, which is where I've been waiting for Don yep. uh, for Chardonnay to arrive. So I was really excited because if he ended up going to Isla Harris, and I think you arrived, you ended up arriving at Isla Harris, avoiding Cancun, yep. and um, you turned the motors off at 10 a.m. And I remember <laughs> that because I was in Cozumel, because I'm following the boat on a tracker throughout the whole journey. Through the Garmin tracker, yeah. yeah um, our Explorer Garmin yeah. tracker. And uh, when I saw that the boats, the engines, you know, were off at 10 o'clock in the morning, I quickly packed up my bag and I hopped yeah. on a ferry. Uh, went to Cancun from Cancun, slipped to uh, Isla Mujeres, and I met Don. And he was exhausted. He had done like a 20 something hour journey. I was exhausted because I was up with them all night tracking the boat, of course, to make sure that they were good. And um, yeah, and so we reunited like on January 1st, yeah. 2023. Yeah. So that was exciting. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, I was so tired too, right? And, and, uh, uh, like, and uh, don't get me wrong, it was a good trip, but you, you got to remember, like, this is all very, very new to us. So first of all, yeah. the, the water and, and uh, being in the Gulf, and also being advised that this isn't a smart thing to do by by the texting border control. And Put your red customs. flags up, yeah. Yeah, and uh, there's a couple of bad experiences, but for the most part, like the locals and everything that we went to, it, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, the weather is the weather, you know what I mean? And it did take that long just because when it said 1 to 1.2 meter swells, I knew that was going to be more. So basically anything over 1.3, 1.4, I ain't going out there. It's just going to be too much. That's all there is to it. So that's it did take us the four months to get there. No, we weren't in a rush. Um, South Padre Island, we were there for two weeks. Or I was. Um, but yeah, we and got then, down. Uh, so yeah, and then we ended up staying in East Lima Harris for yeah. a couple of months, right? We, yeah, we, month? yeah, well, we never had been there. We, we were always in Cozumel before this. Was it a month or a couple of months? I think it was almost two months, yeah. Yeah, a couple yeah. of months yeah. we ended up staying there. We got to know the island, got to meet yeah. a lot of people. And the swimming and the diving and the, the snorkeling. The swimming, the snorkeling, really the water good. is amazing. Yeah. Like, wow, yeah. it was so nice. If um, I could, and then we... We did some more like cleaning the boat, uh, getting the decks redone and all that stuff. So it gave us, you know, both Don and I a chance to breathe, relax. Our final destination was Cozumel, yeah. um, but we did want to hang there for just a couple of months, catch our breath, figure out what the next plan is, yeah. and then uh, stayed there for a couple of months. Then we headed off to Cozumel. There is a video on that as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's just a quick hop. It's about five, six hours at the most. Yeah. About that's, to from Isla to Cozumel yeah. with Chardonnay, so yeah. that was a good day, yeah. for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie was back on board, and uh, so we had some friends with us that came from Isla to Cozumel. Hi, Dar, and um, Charlie did much better this time. She I, wasn't she wasn't, wasn't happy for about half an hour, but for the most part, she did she did much. Yeah, much no, better. I enjoyed it. It yeah. was it was good. Yeah. Uh, there was just like you said. <laughs> part where it got a for me it got a little bit rough like for the boat her, yeah. just rocks too yeah. much and I don't like it when it rocks side to side a lot <laughs> I don't mind the rocking but but it, yeah um, but, but anyway so we ended up in Cozumel yeah. and um, we hung out there and that's where we're at with our videos yeah. but we just wanted to give you guys just a rundown we're trying to make this brief but there's so much to there's a lot of stuff that we kept out of this yeah so 
seriously guys just reach out to us ask us questions feel we're, free we'll answer yeah. well we're easy going yeah. we, we love to network and communicate Absolutely. and keep in touch with you guys and help other people that want to do this because we're yeah. getting a lot of comments we'd love to do the trip and, yeah. and, and so we've been answering a lot of questions yeah uh, privately and stuff like that and uh and share Absolutely. our video yeah, this is uh, it's a exciting journey like two Canadians and a little wiener dog here yeah. um, that did this journey that and we had never been in the seas before so yeah. it was it was quite the experience for us yeah. um, and it's uh, you know if we can give a spark to people to maybe yeah, do it yeah yeah do something like yeah. do something you've never done before it doesn't have to be what we've done exactly but yeah. just to be able to kind of say get out of your comfort zone and try something Absolutely. then why not yeah. so yeah. Th this is where we're at in life i think just kind of like let's go let's just try things oh there and there's lots more coming guys so yes. biggest take on cruising and buying a boat and doing this is don't be in a rush because you are dependent yeah. on weather yes you're dependent on supplies uh you're dependent <laughs> on fuel you're de you're dependent yeah. on so many things so if you plan on being if you do a long journey you plan on being somewhere by specific time and date and so forth it doesn't happen yeah. you're at the mercy of everything yeah. around you and don't be in a rush which yeah. is great you yeah. know like and why you do be want in a rush? you do want roughly 450 gallon minimum gallon capacity for your fuel just for your if it's the journey that if that. you're doing this one yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah we're gonna wrap this up it's been a long video trying to uh yeah. there's so many details to say there's but anyways so, there's so that's so where we're at yeah. Um, and right now we are in Puerto Morelos, which is uh, between Cancun and Playa del Carmen. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really awesome here. Yeah. So can't wait to share that you video. Say, uh, That's going to be show awesome. Sam, before Sam we go? do you want to say hello? And Sammy wants to say hello to our fans. Oh yeah, by the way, Sammy's fantastic on the boat. She's way better than her mom. Yes, she is. She, <laughs> she sleeps. She sleeps on the fly bridge with me and she's just happy as a clam. <laughs> yeah, she's exhausted. She's sleeping right yeah. now. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. It helps us out a lot. It does. We We're appreciate it. We're getting so close to our thousand subscribers, so that's kind of exciting for us. Yeah, that's and, a uh, Yeah, help, help us out and uh, enjoy the videos. Please comment feel free any questions comment we will get back to you absolutely so we're gonna wrap it up guys thank you so much for everything thanks and again we will talk to you guys soon we'll keep you posted as we go take care have yeah. fun enjoy the boats on the boats okay, no we're not going there